the stubborn fat protocols were meant to like, okay, I don't know how you train. I don't know how many days you train. I don't know what you do, what your diet is. These protocols can be inserted as needed. Yeah, and let's just say that um, I'm at the latest stages. Um, yeah. My cardio is high. Um, my steps are high. My knee, uh, my knee, uh, my calories are low. What would you recommend to uh, get that last bit of fat off? Would you like? Because I am like losing uh, the weight gradually uh, yeah. from the because I'm already really lean. So, is it okay at the last stage to get to get the last bit of fat off? Do you think it's a good idea to go like? really low calorie, like uh, protein modified sparing fast or intermittent fasting, some protocols that might work, or is it just calories in, calories out and be patient? It's, it's a little bit of both. And actually one of it is be patient, like with men especially, right? And they're like, oh, what do I do? Men's, men's abdominal fat is not nearly as stubborn as women's hip and thigh fat biologically or otherwise. For men, it really is a matter of patience. I mean, for men, it can be as well, but it can be a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. There are strategies, and I wrote, I wrote that book, The Stubborn Fat Solution, and I wanna say 2008, I think, because that was an interest of mine for about a decade. Uh, I read something by a, a previous expert, a guy named Dan Duchesne, and like for about a decade, I just kind of accumulated thoughts and ideas and research and literature. And then finally, one day I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna write this book now. But it was, it, it's, you know, the book itself didn't take very long, but it was the culmination of 10 years uh, of, of, of paying attention to research. Because there are ways to overcome that, resistant to mo that resistance to mobilization. Like I said, I want to get too deep into like the whys mm -hmm. hormonally. Like I said, you can read the book. I think it's in one of my articles. I'm sure there's an article called, you know, what is stubborn fat on my website somewhere that sort of gets into the details of this. And there's a, there's a few different ones. And, and I talked about this in my book because not everybody, each, not everyone is appropriate for every individual, right? I wanted to give as many different options as I could. So it's like, so this can be integrated with your preferred diet, how you're doing cardio, whatever it is. So one of them is actually some very early research showed that four days of a very low carb diet, right? Like a ketogenic type diet, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, made that hip and lower body fat easier to mobilize. And I don't know if they ever figured out what the mechanism was, but it didn't, it, like in a sense, it doesn't matter. It worked. So that is one approach, right? If you've read my old Ultimate Diet 2, which I wrote long before Stubborn Fat, like it ends up kind of accidentally in, including some of the ideas I came up with later. Because it is, it's about four, four and a half days of very low carbs and you get some of that benefit. The thing is not everyone likes low carb diets. Some people feel terrible on them. Some people just, they're, they feel miserable. Yeah. headaches, loss of concentration, you know, depend. So that's not always an option. So the sec not, second option I discussed was uh, a supplement called uh, Yohimbi or Yohimbine, which mm. is Y-O-H-I-M-B-I-N-E. And so, so we go back in the time machine. Way back in the day, nobody knew anything about anything. Right, you, you read the old research and it's great, but it's like nobody. And so Yohimbine was found to help with erectile dysfunction. It helped men get erections. Now, you will still see it talked about as a testosterone booster because back in the day, if something helped with sexual arousal, research, people just assumed it must be hormonal. But in this case, it's not. Yohimbine is impacting blood flow. Mm -hmm. to pretty much the whole body. And of course, you know, the, the, the genitals are one of them, right? That's how Viagra and Cialis work. You know what I mean? is a different mechanism than those two. But it, it happens to also affect, it improves blood flow to fat cells. It, it so I don't want to get too much into the details. Honestly, it, it improves, it makes it easier to mobilize fatty acids out of stubborn fat cells. 
Yeah. All right. The details aren't that important. It's inhibiting a specific receptor that is making it more difficult. So it's kind of whatever. So that is another option. But that's also not for everybody. Um, it can cause anxiety. It can cause jitters. Uh, if you're a male, this is, I used it when I was younger. Um, if you take it before your morning cardio and go to the gym and see someone that is very attractive to you, you may very likely get aroused because it is going to increase blood, you know, so, so this is, I mean, for women too, women will get some tingles frequently because they're getting increased blood flow down there as well, but it's also not legal everywhere, right? You can't get it in a lot of countries that I'm spoiled in the U.S. We can get anything we want for good or for bad. Um, so that was an option, but not required, and it's not for everybody. People who are prone to anxiety should absolutely not take it. Um, so then I think the other thing that I, the, well, the other, the other strategies I propose, and again, it's so be easier to explain with the details, but just trust me on this. So when you exercise, the two big hormones involved in fat mobilization are adrenaline or epinephrine, depending on what country you live in. Mm -hmm. We call it adrenaline. The rest of the world calls it epinephrine. It's released from the adrenal gland. It is involved in fat mobilization. There's a second hormone called noradrenaline or norepinephrine, very chemically similar. It's released from nerve terminals, right? So the nerves come down and like, here's a fat cell and here's a nerve terminal. So adrenaline is released into the bloodstream. Noradrenaline is released right where it's right at that tissue. And as it turns out in stubborn fats, you need to jack up noradrenaline to get optimal fat mobilization. I think that's the simplest way I can put okay. it. So the, uh, and so the other take home of this is if you look at exercise intensity, as you start cardio intensity, for example, well, just exercise intensity. From, at low intensities, your body only releases adrenaline or epinephrine. And it releases more and more and more and more and more, so you hit a certain threshold. And that threshold is where, it, it's the intensity where above that point, you would be doing interval training, like high intensity intervals. Yeah. Right. Like once you get above this, this hormone, this threshold intensity, you can't continue for long periods of time, but for whatever reason, the body starts pumping out noradrenaline and that helps to mobilize stubborn fat. So is there a way that, you can notice that? Not that I'm aware of in terms of like, I don't think you could measure, I mean, they've done, you know, they do it in research and they measure the bloodstream and look at the levels of all this. I don't think in practice we could, other than to know that it occurs. It's very funny now you mention it. I actually did cardio today for an hour and it was hard. It was like very hard. And at the beginning I experienced like uh, being cold all the time. So right. at the beginning, I'm not sweating. But in those last, uh, 40 minutes or 35 uh -huh. minutes, I'm sweating and I'm warm. Also, if I'm yeah. like walking outside, maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, yeah, which is probably just like changes in blood flow and, and things of all, you know, all that nature. Um, now, what's sort of, again, kind of interesting, you go back to like the 70s and the 80s, right? How people, you know, dieted. They did their, they trained, they cut their calories, they did the hour low intensity walk every morning. Mm -hmm. Now, that would get men in shape, and women frequently, the hip and thigh fat just wouldn't come off, just didn't seem to be as effective, especially when they were doing very high-carb diets. So lower-carb diets helped, um, but then I found some, some, and they see the same thing in research studies, like, all right, we took a bunch of women, gave them an exercise program, and they lost only upper body fat, because that's what you would expect in a woman carrying any significant amount of body fat. But there were a couple that were like, well, we had them do high intensity weight training. They had some high intensity component of that activity. And they were, then they noticed, oh, well, the body fat loss was a little more even. Rather than it being 100% from the upper body, they lost some lower body fat too. And that's kind of, that, that's kind of like the, the secret message of those papers. It's like, okay, you need, you need some intensity in there right? The old, the old approach of dieting, which was high carb, low fat, and nothing but low intensity cardio, kind of doesn't get it done. Hmm. And, we're, uh, and, and someone, again, I did a podcast 
whenever and someone said, okay, you know, you wrote this book in 2008. In 2020, where does the stubborn, where does the stubborn fat, where does that concept fall? Because a lot of coaches will say, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen stubborn fat. What's going on? What's, and the difference is if you look at modern contest dieting, it's very different now than it was 10 years ago. Because 10 or 15 years ago, again, everyone did high carb, low fat, low intensity cardio. Now, protein intakes are higher, fat intakes are higher, carbohydrate intakes are much more moderate, and people are doing more intensity. They're doing high intensity intervals once or twice a week. They're basically, in a sense, they've kind of integrated some of the protocols that I wrote about as mm -hmm. just a standard part of contest dieting. Yeah. So these two protocols I came up with, like I needed to find a way to kind of leverage both, both parts of it. Because high intensity actually like interval training or even like higher repetition, short rest weight training, like it doesn't have to be like bike intervals or cardio intervals, generates this great hormonal response. However, doesn't burn a lot of calories. For, uh, for some reasons, it, even though it, it sends a signal to mobilize fatty acids, it can trap them inside the fat cell, right? Because something that can happen, right, is say so you've got a fat cell. If you mobilize a fatty acid out of it and the blood flow is not very good, it'll just go right back in <laughs> and get stored. <laughs> wow, that's... Uh... Women, women's bodies are amazing. Women's bodies can mobilize fat from the upper body. And if it doesn't get burned off for fuel, for energy, it can get stored in the lower body. Women's oh. bodies hate them. Um, Cause like back in the day, women would say, look, I'm dieting, I'm getting leaner in my upper body, but my, my lower body is getting fatter. We all said, nah, can't be, but it's true. Women's, so, so, so you have to first mobilize the fatty acid, have blood flow, get it away from the fat cell. So it can't just go right back in, but then you have to burn it off for energy. Yeah. So the, the protocols that I came up with, there are two different ones that were just variations on the theme. The first one, you start with a short interval workout. So do a little warm up, do maybe, you know, five by 45 to 60 seconds hard, like above your sustainable threshold. Yeah, you know, rest a minute, minute hard, rest a minute. It could be 30 seconds, whatever. Do five reps, and then what that's doing is that's jacking up noradrenaline and norepinephrine levels. It's, jack it's getting that hormonal response. Yeah. to mobilize those fatty acids. But now once they're mobilized, you need to burn them off. So now you go get a drink of water, rest a couple minutes, and then you follow that up with 20 to 40 minutes of regular cardio to burn off the fatty acids. So that was the, stubborn, the first stubborn fat protocol. Do a short interval work. And like I said, it doesn't have to be bike or elliptical or rowing. Like if you want to go do like, you know, sort of a metabolic weight training workout or battle ropes or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It just has to be that five intense. or 10 minutes of, of really intense activity. Well, you want the hormonal response. Yeah. How you get it is less, is less important to get that mobilization going. Then you go do some moderate intensity cardio to burn the fatty acids off. And then the second protocol is the variation on the theme. You started with short intervals to really get a really, really intense hormonal response. Did your cardio and you actually finished with another short interval workout to get whatever calorie burn, you know, after calorie burn you're going to get. That one was too intense for most people. Um, but even doing, you know, that the short, the, the, the protocol one, short interval workout, rest a few minutes, steady state cardio a couple times a week that's frequently all it really takes to, to get that, to get that mobilized, you know, assuming you're still in a calorie deficit. Um, the nice thing about that protocol is you don't have to change your diet, right? You don't have to be on a low carb diet. You don't have to take a supplement that maybe is not good for you or you can't get. You don't have to change your entire training structure. That was the issue with the ultimate diet too, is unless you're able to train exactly like it said, you couldn't, really use its principles the stubborn fat protocols were meant to like okay i don't know how you train i don't know how many days you train i don't know what you do what your diet is these protocols can be inserted as needed yeah you know now you have to be careful you know if you're training legs heavy twice a week during a diet and you try to throw two high intensity interval workouts on top of that that may be too much for your legs 
right? It's yeah. very easy to, to, to overdo it when you're dieting on, on low calories. Yeah. So, you know, if you're doing two heavy leg training d- days a week, you may only be able to do that protocol once a week. Yeah. Ultimately, now you, go ahead. Now you also mentioned that, uh, I also want to talk about water retention. 